Welcome back to Dark Corners Streaming. <laughs> See how easy it is to hook them? <laughs> With Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley in cinemas at the time of recording, it's a good time to look back at the 1947 film based on the same novel by William Lindsay Gresham, following the career of carnival mentalist Stanton Carlyle, played in this version by Tyrone Power. I don't like it. All of it. Carlyle loves the world of the carnival, but right from the start, there is a dark side to that love. You see those yokels out there? It gives you sort of a superior feeling, as, as if you were in the know and they were on the outside looking in. And when chance allows him to step into the shoes of mind reader Zena's stooge... What have I here? ..he rises to the challenge, and then rises beyond it. The film had a larger-than-usual budget for what is essentially a film noir, reflected both in its stars, Joan Blondell plays Xena, and in the ten-acre carnival set built on the Fox backlot. Director Edmund Goulding, writer Jules Firthman and cameraman Lee Gums were all industry veterans with careers that went back to the silent era. But Though Nightmare Alley is the product of old Hollywood craftsmen, it is a distinctly un-Hollywood film. Even for a noir, it is unromantic, unheroic, and deeply cynical. Wasn't that Pete's card? Sure, now it's yours. As Carlyle takes his harmless chicanery to the next level. But I see it's a girl, a lovely girl of 16 duping the wealthy Addie Peabody, played by Curse of the Cat People's Julia Dean, and even using his sideshow skills to win over his increasingly sceptical wife. Simple, honest little people who believe in me. They say I've given them hope. In many ways, despite some clever twists, it's a by-the-numbers story, and Carlyle's trajectory is unlikely to surprise anyone. How much did he give you? 150 grand. But it's brilliantly made and is played to the hilt. Power giving a career best performance in a role he had hoped would break his typecasting as a romantic swashbuckler. Don't forget to err is human. To forgive, divine. Convincing in every moment as the charismatic chancer is brought down by the ravages of fate. I don't hear anything. He's matched by the three actresses he plays opposite, Blondell, Colleen Gray as his wife Molly, and particularly Helen Walker, who owns the film's most memorable scene. Do I make myself clear? You must regard it all as a nightmare. If there were any justice, the film would have made Walker a star and proved Power a more versatile actor than anyone could have suspected. But it flopped at the box office partly because audiences would not accept the matinee idol as an immoral con man. Our motives are so pure, so unselfish. Wait a minute. I don't want to waste time comparing this to Del Toro's version, but what I will say is that both are worth watching. You just have to decide which to see first, because there are moments they share that you can really only experience once. Takes one to catch one. A re-release in 1956, not long before Power's death, gave Nightmare Alley a second chance, and it has since been recognized as a classic, charting the dark side of the American dream. And it's on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Tyrone Power is fantastic here. What other actors have proved themselves better than the roles that made them famous? Let us know in the comments below.